Hanse and good afternoon. I'm Chris Nashkite. Welcome to APTN National News. The University of Manitoba says it has hundreds of Indigenous ancestral remains, belongings and artifacts in its possession. Now they want to return them to their rightful First Nations, Métis and Inuit communities. Sav Johnza was at the announcement on Monday. The University of Manitoba is publicly apologizing for their collection of Indigenous ancestral remains, a collection they are now calling inappropriate. The University of Manitoba did not live up to its ideals in their true form. Today, we begin by atoning for these historic failures. We apologize for these past wrongs. We are sorry. University President Michael Benarosh says the process of rematriating and repatriating, or the returning of the human remains and burial artifacts, will start immediately. The U of M began collecting the remains of Indigenous ancestors at the turn of the 20th century. We use these ancestral remains and belongings in classrooms and in laboratories, and sometimes put them on display all without consent from First Nation, Inuit and Métis families, communities and nations. They say they acquired the remains and artifacts in different ways, including some brought to them by the RCMP. These acquisitions ended in the early 1980s. Today when I witnessed so many emotions in the ceremony this morning, I get it. Um, to learn about ancestors being in drawers, in paper bags, in stapled little baggies. Um, it's, it's horrific, it's, it's, it's devastating. Lucy Bell is co-chair and co-founder of the Haida Repatriation Committee. She has been bringing ancestors' remains home to Haida Gwaii, north of Vancouver Island, for 30 years. As of 2021, she helped bring home more than 500 sets of remains. Now, she's adding a few more. Tomorrow, we take home four of our, our ancestors from this institution, and it's not easy work. It never gets easier to be handling the bones of our ancestors. Bell hopes that other institutions holding ancestral remains, like Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, will follow the U of M's footsteps. Sav Jonza, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Thousands of people are expected at Juneau Beach in Normandy, France tomorrow to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Juneau Beach is where Canadian forces landed as part of the Allied invasion that led to the end of Nazi Germany's occupation of Europe. Joining the Canadian contingent led by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is a group from the Papixis First Nation in Saskatchewan. Brittany Poitras of the First Nations University in Regina tells us why they are there. Papikasi's chief and council were welcomed by the Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, Russ Morasti, and General Cliff Walker with the Royal Regina Rifles Trust. The ceremony commemorates Papikasi's First Nation for their high number of members enlisted in World War II. No First Nation contributed more soldiers to the war effort, especially to the invasion than Papasakis uh, did in, during World War II. Papikasi's band counselor, Alan Bird's father, Charles, along with more than 50 other Papikasi's members, enlisted to fight in World War II. Charles Bird was among the soldiers who stormed Juneau Beach in France on June 6, 1944. My dad always said, I was fighting for my land. I was fighting for my home. I was fighting for my, my people. Papikasi's contributions to World War II are being recognized. The regiment is presenting this replica statue for display in the Veterans Hall on Papikasis. The full-size statue makes its way to Juneau Beach, France, where it will be permanently installed June 6th, honoring Canadian and Papikasis history forever. The eight-foot-tall bronze statue was unveiled last month at the Saskatchewan's Legislative Building. Hundreds were able to view the statue before it reaches its final destination in Normandy, France. Alberta-based sculptor Don Begg created the statue. Begg wanted the statue to convey an authentic expression of what soldiers would have looked like as they defended our country. More than 100,000 people are expected to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landing on Juneau Beach, June 6th. Papikasi's chief Frank Dieter and Councillor Alan Bird will be amongst those in attendance. 
I am so proud of him, they're so brave. And I'm so glad many came home, but those that didn't, I'm so proud of them too. And we'll meet them on the beach on the 6th, and we'll have a ceremony with them. Brittany Poitras, Indigenized News. On May 16th, the federal government announced the signing of a $149 million agreement with the Huron-Wendat Nation. It sets out to redress the harm that nation suffered from the illegal sale of its land. It happened in an area known as the Rockmont Reserve, 80 kilometers north of Quebec City. Kijite Valle Chizo explains the agreement. After 10 years of negotiations, the federal government and the Eurowendat Nation recently settled the century-old Rockmont Reserve claim. Je salue la sagesse des membres de la nation Eurowendat qui ont qui ont décidé de voter pour la, la proposition qu'on leur a faite. Puis à 88%, euh, je pense que le message est clair. Euh, les gens les gens croient en, en l'avenir de notre nation puis croient que ces argents-là doivent servir pour les prochaines générations aussi. The settlement pays the nation 149 million dollars and offers a potential to acquire of up to 9,600 acres of land. Ça constitue un jalon important sur la voie de la réconciliation entre le gouvernement du Canada et la nation huron wendat euh, Aussi un, un premier pas dans le renouvellement de nos relations de nation à nation. Grand Chief Rémi Vincent was elected in 2020. One of his priorities was negotiating this claim. J'étais très à l'aise de la présenter à ma population. C'est important pour nous de de bien régler les revendications particulières. Donc, c'est certain qu'on on souhaite régler plus de revendications particulières et à, à un rythme raisonnable. Euh, mais au final, c'est important que la Première Nation qui vient de régler une revendication particulière avec le Canada se sente bien, soit, soit satisfait du résultat. Working with a legal team and negotiators, the Eurowendat nation reached an agreement that reflected the loss they had suffered. In 1904, the Rockman Reserve was sold for $7,501. La vente s'était faite illégalement parce que le référendum était pas valable. The negotiations were therefore about compensation for the loss of use by the nation. Le volume forestier qui a été exploité pendant toutes ces années-là sur le territoire, parce que c'est un territoire forestier, il y a eu un peu de perte aussi faunique. According to the Green Chief, the amount should already have been deposited in the Rockman Trust account. Donc, c'est complètement indépendant du Conseil de la Nation Rwanda. He also mentioned that community projects will be put forward. For example, loans for housing or wind energy projects. Ça, ça c'est des projets qui pourraient être extrêmement intéressants, qui sont porteurs pour la nation, qui sont porteurs pour les membres, qui sont porteurs pour le futur. In addition to the $149 million settlement, it will also be possible to acquire land through mutual agreement. Donc ça, c'est-à-dire que euh, la nation de Ron Wendat peut acheter des terres de personnes qui sont disposées à les vendre et ensuite demander à ce que ces terres soient mises de côté en tant que réserve. Grand Chief Vincent said land acquisition could help expand the community. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de place. Là. C est, c est, c est, on, on a, on a 1100 membres de notre communauté qui attendent sur une liste pour venir rester sur notre communauté. Et on n'a on on a pas, pas d'endroit pour les loger. Grand Chief Rémi Vincent hopes that this case will continue to benefit the nation and future generations. Qui j'étais Alexandra Veillet-Chizo, EPTN National News, Montréal. A short break now, but when we return, the Ho-Chunk Nation in Wisconsin, along with a group of archaeologists, have made a major discovery. We'll tell you all about it when we return. Welcome back to south of the border now, where the Ho-Chunk Nation, along with maritime archaeologists in Wisconsin, made a huge discovery. Hidden underneath sediment, they found nearly a dozen dugout canoes at the bottom of Lake Mendota in Madison, Wisconsin. According to the Wisconsin Historical Society, the oldest canoe was built 4,500 years ago, making it the oldest discovery ever recorded in the Great Lakes region. 
The canoes were found in a section of the lake bed in the ancestral territory of the Ho-Chunk Nation. The first canoe was found three years ago, and all the canoes will now be safely preserved in a facility in Madison for further conservation and study. Two of them will be on display at the Wisconsin Historical Society's History Center, set to open in 2027. This, this is an important historic moment for maritime archaeology for the state of Wisconsin, for the Ho-Chunk Nation, but also the Great Lakes region and tribal nations across the Great Lakes region too, because this is the oldest dugout canoe dating back to 1000 BC uh, that's ever been found and recovered in the Great Lakes region. The ability to take today's process now through science and their expertise over here and utilize it to teach our youth you know, about our steep history and a connection to an area here that reaches all the way back to the last glacier period. You know, they say 3,000 years, right, that dugout canoe. The Saskatchewan Government Insurance Solstice Speaker Series is wrapping up its third year of bringing Indigenous culture and discussions to Regina. The Royal Saskatchewan Museum in Regina is hosting the final installment of this year's Solstice Speaker Series on June 11th. Indigenous leaders share their talents, thoughts and traditions which acknowledging the changing seasons. The coming event features duo T-Bear and Ed Duzi, who are storytellers, jugglers and musicians. Craig Perot is with the Friends of the Royal Saskatchewan Museum. He says, we everyone will benefit from the series. But also a chance for us all just to come together and be able to walk away. Go, okay, let's think about that. Now what do I go do? How do I you know, engage in the world and make it better? The Kainai Blood Tribe in southern Alberta performed a headdress transfer ceremony to their first athlete to go to the Olympics. 21-year-old Apollo Hess will be competing at this upcoming Paris Summer Olympics with Team Canada's swim team next month. He placed second in the breaststroke in the Olympics 100-meter trials. The community performed an honor dance and presented him with gifts to celebrate his achievement. Hess is the latest in a long history of Indigenous Olympians. This is kind of like a life lesson that I've learned that hopefully some of you can take on as well, is that if you have a dream and, and you really want it for yourself, you just speak it. You speak it out into the universe and it will happen. In Selkirk, Manitoba, dozens attended a healing gathering breaking down gender norms in land-based practices. The Aki Nindudawa, I Heard It From The Land Healing Gatherings, was spearheaded by L.P. Penner of the Survivors Hope Crisis Center and community leader Jeannie Whitebird. It welcomed survivors of sexual and gender-based violence along with community members to engage in land-based healing. On Tuesday afternoon, participants learned about teepee pole peeling using trunks they harvested over the weekend. Whitebird hopes to make this gathering an annual event. What better way to, to bring about healing in an Indigenous context than bringing people out onto the land and doing all these beautiful, wonderful activities and doing it, knowing that we could do this all together, knowing that it doesn't have to be for just men, it doesn't have to be for just, you know, just one group of people, one gender. We can do all this work together. Indigenous History Month is underway and that marks the start of a new project on APTN News Online. Each day will feature a poem from our First, Nur First Nation Inuk and Métis poet online and TV. Nicholas Oldshoes, known as Donnie Sage, is a Blackfoot artist using his past traumas to write music and inspire others who grew up in similar circumstances. He's the fifth poet featured in the APTN News Online anthology series for Indigenous History Month. Here's his reading of I'm lost, I'm five. The definition of my sanity. Repeating the same cycle over and over again. Expecting a different outcome. I'm tired of running in circles. Trying so hard just to get to the end. The feeling is claustrophobic. Like I'm five years old being trapped in a closet by my brother. Darkness. Saved by an angel for a split second. Everything is fine then. Reality sets in. I'm hungry. Tired. 
scared, lost. I'm five years old and I've already experienced so much depression. I'm lost. I'm five. Lice infested, hear my message. Times are different now, but I was affected. Disrespected, runt of the family, what's expected of me, perfection? Years neglected by the woman who made me. Why do you hate me? I just want acceptance. I don't want to learn the hard way, mom. What's my lesson? In the future, you will say that I was always meant for greatness. I hate this sentence. I'm five, and please kill me now. I hate the present. It's the past. I'm lost. Mom sauced, I'm sitting crisscross, waiting for her by the door like I'm a f***ing dog. She called us puppies and drank the money. Bottle trauma, youngest out of six, Joseph, please quit hitting your baby mama. I'm sleeping with my shoes on, and now I'm five. My feet are infected, cause I don't know how to take a bath, it's been weeks, I haven't ate in a couple of days, I feel weak, I'm tired of being abused when I speak, it's the truth, I know it hurts, but why me, why me, why me? Thank you, Nicholas, for sending that powerful poem in. Coming up next, we will speak to the creator of a new indigenous streaming service. We'll be back in less than three minutes. Over on the East Coast, St. John's 10 and sunny, Charlottetown 13. Nain 7, Penujuac 12. Quebec City 22. Gasp, 12. Sarnia, 24. Sault Ste. Marie, 21 with Sun. Wawa, 25. Timmins, 24. Puckatawagan, 7. Thompson, 7. Winnipeg, 18. Dauphin, 14. Regina, 12. North Battleford, 11. Stony Rapids, 6. Meadow Lake, 10 with Rain. Fort Chippewa, 9. Fort McMurray, 9 as well. Calgary, 14. Edmonton, 10. Penticton, 13. Campbell River, 11. Dees Lake, 9. Prince George, 12. Beaver Creek, 16. Whitehorse, 7. Fort Simpson, 11. Norman Wells, 15. Colville Lake, 12. Anuvik, 2. Baker Lake 3, Cambridge Bay 1. Agulik minus 1, Resolute 0. A new streaming platform is now on the market that aims to put indigenous storytelling at the forefront. Aki Creators is now available online globally. It features the works of indigenous artists in dance, film, TV, and other digital projects. Sandra Laurent is one of the people behind Aki Creators. She spoke with me earlier from Toronto. Sandra, thanks for chatting with us today and, and taking some time out of your busy schedule. Uh, you're currently in Toronto traveling uh, from one conference, point A to point B, so you're very busy, so you took some time out of your busy schedule and you're in a lobby. Uh, so thank you, Sandra. <laughs> oh, my pleasure, thank you. Can you tell us about Aki Creators? Aki Creators is a brand new digital platform which essentially amplifies Indigenous voices in the digital space. And uh, we're really interested in looking at the intersection of Indigenous wisdom, art and land, uh, primarily in that um, digital space. Why do you think a streaming platform uh, like this was needed? It's very important to have our voices in the digital space um, because uh, it's a very robust space and it's going to be more and more so in the future. And so it's really important to have our narrative um, driven in that space and to tell our stories in that space because if we don't, someone else is going to do it. And it's, uh, you know, and the other thing that's great about a digital 
world is that you can you can be global very very quickly which is which is great digital streaming that seems like the thing right now whatever you know whatever tv we turn on netflix crave whatever uh there's a lot of indigenous content there but there's nothing quite like this hey eh? that's right our uh digital platform is very unique in that way um it's not netflix where it's just anything in general it, it's really, really more specific to uh, what we're interested in seeing out in the world. Primarily our own stories told by ourselves um, and bringing in our own indigenous uh, wisdom and knowledge and relationship to land and to speak about those themes that are really, uh, really important. And, um, and to be able to make global connections, you know, across Turtle Island, but even beyond, which is very exciting uh, space. And within our digital platform, we're going to be launching our very first a short film uh, called Land Dances Us. And it's a short film about, um, um, it's basically an Anishinaabe creation story with a contemporary twist, but um, it is done in AI and live performance and where those meet. So, so it's in AI essentially. That's great to hear. And, and how can artists and storytellers out there team up with Aki creators? Well, they can definitely get in touch with us, go on onto our platform, um, akecreators.com, and you can submit um, some of the work. And, uh, th and because what we're trying to do is amplify as many Indigenous content creators that are out there whether they're filmmakers, content creators. We have a series called Red Talks as well. So people could also be interviewed with Red Talks, which we also upload. And so we're really trying to drive that narrative, that indigenous narrative in the digital sphere. Um, so everybody's welcome to to come onto our platform and, and participate. And there's also some um, free free things that people can, or you could subscribe to a monthly or an annual sub subscription as well. Uh, what are your hopes for the Aki platform uh, moving ahead here? Um, our hope is that it would really drive change in what is the Indigenous narrative, what is the visual representation of Indigenous people in that digital world. Uh, that new films are created, that there's new content creators, there's new voices, and that there's a lot of subscribers and um, and a lot of Indigenous content creators, um, and that this becomes something uh, very rich and meaningful to people. That would be a wonderful achievement. And finally, really briefly, where can people sign up and watch? People can sign up and watch um, an Aki Creators, so A-K-I, Aki creators.com and, and find our platform there and for those that want to um, submit something there's a you just scroll down and you'll see how to submit something to the platform yeah and we have wonderful partners involved isuma um, is involved we have rugged media and we have some beautiful uh, short films that are up there from different content creators right now Mm -hmm. Well, right on, Sandra. We'll uh, be sure to check it out and make sure our viewers check it out as well. Thanks for making some time for us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Jim McQuitch, thank you. And that's your midday newscast for this Wednesday, June 5th. We'll be back again for your 5 p.m. newscast with more brand new stories. Thank you for watching.